chance at a fresh start. Chapter 13, however, is different. That is more of a reorganization of debt. Basically, your finances get examined to work out how much you can afford to pay into a repayment plan for three to five years. And if you make all the payments in that plan, at the end of it, your debts do get discharged. And this does have its benefits. You don't have to give up assets like a house or a car. But, and this is a huge but, if you miss even one payment, your case could be dismissed and the whole deal is off. You're essentially all the way back to square one. And the uncomfortable fact is, this happens in most Chapter 13 cases, because only a third actually make it all the way to discharge. And Chapter 13 is also actually much more expensive to file, because while attorneys charge on average about $1,300 to file Chapter 7, for Chapter 13, they generally charge about $3,800. So you might be thinking, well, if Chapter 13 is more costly, more difficult, and less likely to get you a genuinely fresh start, why would anyone choose it? Well, for some, it might be the right fit. Remember, it gives you a chance to keep your house, which you might need to live in, and your car, which you might need to work. But for many, many more, Chapter 13, despite costing three ah. times as much in the long term, can actually seem like the better financial option when you file. Because Chapter 7 generally requires you to pay lawyers up front, whereas Chapter 13 can be different, as law firms can be eager to point out to you. Is debt constantly on your mind? Are you looking to get a fresh start financially? Then call the bankruptcy attorneys at Wooten & Wooten. We even offer a no money down chapter 13 plan. Okay, first, get the fuck out of my void, Wooten. I know I don't technically own the concept of sad white emptiness. Jared Leto's got the market covered on that one. But I will be damned if I let this adult who looks like he just made a wish to be big steal my whole vibe. But the point here is, if you are already in a bad spot with your finances, which you probably are, if you're considering bankruptcy, no money up front might not just sound good, it might be your only option. The worry is that some lawyers guide their clients to the more expensive Chapter 13 when they'd actually be far better served with Chapter 7. And if you know anything about America, it will not surprise you to learn that when researchers ran an academic experiment, they found attorneys were more likely to recommend Chapter 13 to a hypothetical black couple, called, by the way, Reggie and Letitia, than they were to a hypothetical white couple called Todd and Allison. And putting aside the question of whether the researchers plucked Reggie and Letitia from the big book of stereotypical, but hopefully not offensively so, black names, the fact is the study's findings do help explain why nationally Reggie. the odds of black debtors choosing Chapter 13 instead of Chapter 7 were more than twice as high as white debtors with a similar financial profile. So even bankruptcy discriminates against black people, which is coincidentally the cover story on this month's issue of Yeah, No Shit magazine. And the fact that people are often pushed into the form of bankruptcy with far less successful outcomes mean that they can end up having to fold bankruptcy again down the line. And knowing that makes it a little hard to see financial experts like Susie Orman broadly frame repeated filing as a moral failing. Most people who claim bankruptcy once claim it twice. So if you are claiming bankruptcy, you have got to learn because if you get yourself into that situation again, if you go out and you rack up all this credit card debt and all this stuff again, and you have to claim bankruptcy again, then I say, shame on you. Wow. Susie is offering repeat bankruptcy filers the shame on you, normally reserved for dogs who peed on the carpet and nosy pharmacists in Magnolia who've asked Julianne Moore one too many questions. I have sickness all around me and you fucking asked me my life. Have you seen death in your bed? In your house? Where's your fucking decency? And then I've asked fucking questions? What's wrong? You suck my dick! That's what's wrong! And you, you fucking call me lady? Shame on you! Shame on you! I have no idea what, what this was. First, experts say that Allman's claim that most bankruptcy filers file twice is just wrong. But much more importantly, even those who do end up filing a second time often do so due to factors that have nothing to do with recklessness. Like, for instance, getting pushed into a... I can't tell if that was a bit or whatever the fuck was going on.
a Chapter 13 bankruptcy that was not right for them. And there was something else that can significantly limit the help that bankruptcy can provide, because there are whole categories of non-dischargeable debts, debts that even bankruptcy cannot get rid of. You typically can't wipe out debt from criminal penalties, taxes, or child support through bankruptcy. And there is another massive category, as this woman learned. 31-year-old Radmila Sulimonova graduated with a master's from New York University in 2008 during the depths of the Great Recession. Jobless, she quickly defaulted on her $80,000 student loan bill. Oh, well, I'll just file for bankruptcy like everyone else is doing, ha, ha, ha. And then you realize, no, the only way to get away from your student loan debt is to die. Yeah. And to communicate just how bad student loan debt is as a generational dead weight on millennials, I guarantee you, anyone with student loans watching this right now heard $80,000 and thought, yeah, I don't know, I've, I've heard much worse. Because, yeah, she could have bought like this bad. entire three-bedroom, two-bathroom house in Indianapolis, but who really needs a place to live when you have a framed eight and a half by 11 piece of paper with your name on it? That can, just like a house, keep you safe from the rain. And if all that weren't bad enough, our current system adds insult to injury through mandatory credit counselling courses, which can be exactly as patronising as they sound. Even bankruptcy judges have called them inane and a procedural hurdle without value or consequence, with one even noting a course referred participants to the local library for resources on bankruptcy and recommended they seek a job making higher wages. And I'm sure they had never thought of doing that before it was very cleverly pointed out to them. And if it seems that these courses... I like that jokes that we have created in this community are actually documented examples of, of or, or actually documented uh, pieces of advice within the, uh, that's, it's like literally where people are guided to uh, in our justice system. Just slide the fucking Indeed slider further to the right, you dumb fuck, is literally the argument or the, the, that they're saying uh, good, good advice courses may have limited value one that we found online even seemed to reluctantly acknowledge that fact your attorney may have gone over your particular situation with you in their office already perhaps they explained why credit counseling will not work for you many debtors therefore believe that this mandatory credit counseling exercise is pointless we hope instead you will take a more positive view of this mandatory course oh you hope so do you that's basically an admission that the whole thing's a waste of time. Although, quick question here. Why is the attorney there cartoon me? He's wearing my glasses. He has my bangs. He's negging an unwilling civilian while waving around a boring amount of paperwork. The guy is more me than I am. And while at best, an objectively hunky cartoon, lecturing you on your finances is annoying. At worst, it can be actively insulting because the assumption in these courses is that you are in this position due to reckless personal behavior. But imagine how that argument feels if you, like this woman, went bankrupt after having to leave your job to take care of your son who died from cystic fibrosis. In September, we sat down to take the credit counseling course and um, it was sort of a slap in the face, honestly. And we have not yet finished that course. We logged off and needed to walk away from it for a little while. And we'll need to do it again after we actually go through the filing process and meet with the judge. It's a requirement after you file as well, so that you can, I guess, get an idea of how to not do the same thing again in the future. Um, there isn't exactly uh, like a full blown number, but <clears throat> studies have been conducted on this. First of all, United States of America is uh, one of the few nations, on the, one of the few OECD nations on the planet that where you actually have medical bankruptcy as a concept. So if you're watching from Europe, yes, we have medical bankruptcies as a concept. You might not have been aware of this. And it's not just when I say that, I don't mean like elective surgery, like plastic surgery to get bigger titties. And then you're bankrupt. I mean, like literally in the United States of America, we have a for-profit healthcare system and therefore one can go bankrupt, right? It happens in other countries as well. Don't get me wrong. I'm just, you know, you might not be aware. Okay. Um, 
one study conducted on this is uh has said that 62.1 percent of bankruptcies in the united states are caused by medical issues if not directly but indirectly as well okay um there are uh different studies conducted on this matter routinely uh, the Kaiser Family Foundation, LA Times survey uh, in uh, uh, 2019 found that one in five people surveyed have been contacted by collections agencies, while 9% of those surveyed stated that they had declared personal bankruptcy due to medical expenses. So this was a, uh, this was a survey uh, for people with employer-sponsored insurance by the Kaiser Family Foundation. It was a selective study. Future. So, which is an incredibly hurtful idea that I'm not looking forward to. No, of course you're not. Because having a course suggest that there is a way not to have your child die again in the future is a fucking insult. And it is terrible that she not only had to go through that, but... It's like saying, hey, sorry. But we as a uh, governing body fucked up and did not offer to you something that other comparable OECD nations offer to their citizens, and therefore now you are undergoing medical debt because of a traumatic incident that took the life of a loved one, and now you're fucked. Like, now you're absolutely fucked. And a similar concept could be made for a lot of these low-paying jobs. Um, in the words of Katie Porter, the shortfall, the budget shortfall, is built into the system. Okay. The budget shortfall is built into the system. You are not supposed to survive this process. It's supposed to wash over you. The tide is supposed to fucking take you. That's how it works. If you have, it doesn't matter if you have a job. It doesn't matter if you have a child. It does not uh, matter. All of these things are expenses and your job is not going to be able to pay for those expenses then had to rehash it in the Senate in an attempt to get that requirement changed, which, by the way, it wasn't. And the truth is, so much of what is wrong with our current bankruptcy system stems from that 2005 law that I mentioned to you earlier. Expanding the non-dischargeability of student loan debt, that was in there. Uh, the mandatory credit counseling classes, that was in there too. The law also made bankruptcy harder to complete, adding over a dozen ways that someone could make a technical error and be dismissed. It was a huge win for the credit card companies and for all the assurances from Grassley and others that it would target high income people abusing the system without hurting those of lesser means. After it passed, bankruptcy filings dropped disproportionately in poorer neighborhoods with filings there decreasing 32% more than in rich ones. Showing that, as always, when things are designed to become harder for everyone, for the rich, they just become a bit more expensive and for the poor, they become basically impossible. So what can we do here? Well, Ideally, the people responsible for that 2005 law would acknowledge that our system badly needs fixing. And coincidentally, one of the most prominent backers of that law is actually the fucking president now. Joe Biden is from Delaware, home to some of the biggest credit card companies, and his support was crucial in getting the 2005 law passed. And it is not like he wasn't warned that it could lead to trouble. When it was being debated, Elizabeth Warren, then a Harvard law professor studying bankruptcy, testified about how medical debt ruins people's lives and how this bill could significantly hinder their one remaining chance to get out from underneath it. And Joe Biden kept shifting focus back to the poor creditors who wouldn't get their money. Until we fix the broken health care finance system, right. those families have to turn somewhere. And that means now they turn as a last-ditch effort to the bankruptcy right. court. And that means they turn to asking the people that they borrowed money from to pay for their health care cost, right? We're going to ask the gas company, the drugstore, the automobile dealer to pay for the broken system. Dude, that, that poor fucking creditor, dude. Listen, here's, here's the thing I got to say here, by the way. <clears throat> Here's what I got to point out here, ladies and gentlemen. That, uh, that, that, uh, brilliant, bold woman there literally thin a wrist at all for fucking that geriatric fuck who she credits for, uh, getting her involved in politics because of how terrible this fucking specific legislation was. 
Like that's literally what Elizabeth Warren <coughs> points to is why she became interested in politics. Like personally, we wanted to become a legislator. And of course, she straight up, straight the fuck up, dropped everything on a dime for that old fuck and got nothing in return. Just remember that. Okay, but that's not really how this works, is it? It's not like we're living in some small town in the 1920s, racking up debts to the corner store for groceries, the butcher shop for meat, and the local pharmacy for cough drops laced with weapons-grade cocaine. No, we're living in a world where medical debt is out of control, and people have envelopes rammed through their door every day, screaming that they're pre-approved for a credit card. Oh, look, this one has Snoopy on it. Can you take, can you give a take without saying literally? I literally cannot. Why are you literally so triggered? Now, the good news is, in December, Elizabeth Warren proposed the consumer bankruptcy reform. That motherfucker looks like, kind of looks like Jack Septicai a little bit. Now, the good news is, in December, Elizabeth Warren proposed the Consumer Bankruptcy Reform Act, which would completely overhaul our bankruptcy system. It would eliminate excessive paperwork needed for filing, thereby lowering attorney costs. It would make student loan debt dischargeable. It would get rid of the requirement for a credit counseling course. And it would combine Chapter 7 and 13 into a new, more flexible Chapter 10. It's a combination that would be an improvement, sort of like Burger King's chicken fries. A little bit chicken little bit fries, all in a box that looks like I asked my kids to draw me from memory. And while Biden has broadly expressed support for Warren's reforms, the fact is her plan is unlikely to pass in its entirety because it would need 10 Republicans in the Senate to get on board because Democrats like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema are still in a death cult over the filibuster for some reason. Not only that, but Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema would never vote for this, specifically because they're fucking gigantic pieces of shit. Uh, that uh, get off on being the hard asses that hold up understandable, positive, solid uh, pieces of legislation that would be helpful, okay? Um, including, but not limited to, refusing to increase corporate tax rate back to uh, 29%, Or, no, uh, fuck. <clears throat> Hold on. Including, but not limited to, no, 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 not 35, boys. Not 35. Not 35. It is 28%, which is what the Democratic Party is has been stating. Um, the corporate tax rate, tax rate under the Joe Biden plan would be raised back to 28%. Not uh, 29, as I said earlier. And it will likely land at 25%. Now, the reason why this is ridiculous, that we're even discussing this right now, the reason why they only want to raise it to 28 is ridiculous, is because, I don't know if you know that, but it was literally 35% three years ago. It's not like the corporate tax rate was entire... Like It's not like the corporate tax rate has been... 25% for years or, or, or uh, you know, and that's what they raise it to. It used to be 35%. Three years ago, it was 35%. Okay? Donald Trump lowered it. <laughs> and we're not even talking about the effective tax rate. We're just talking about what the, what the official rate is. This is the Democratic Party, ladies and gentlemen. This is the future of the Democratic Party. The future of the Democratic Party. Doesn't even matter. I thought a lot of corporations pay zero in tax anyways through loopholes. They do, but the loopholes should be closed and punished as well. But the fact is, something big needs to happen here because we badly need to get our broken bankruptcy system working again for people who desperately need a lifeline. And meanwhile, while we wait for Congress to act, the very least we can do is offer an alternative credit counseling course that isn't quite so insulting. Hello there. I'm the Cartooniverse's steamiest wonk. If you're watching this video, chances are you've hit hard times. Maybe your husband was pancaked by an unmarked cargo van. 
Or maybe you lost your job due to the coronavirus and that fateful day in 2019 when one bat fucked that other bat. Either way, you're saddled with debt right now and you're looking for a fresh start. Thankfully, you found bankruptcy. Less that is, your debt is student loans, in which case you should think about faking your own death because odds are you're as fucked as this bat. Under current bankruptcy law, you're required to complete this credit counselling course. And the key thing I'm here to tell you is, there are two main kinds of personal bankruptcy. Chapter 7, that's the thing you think of as bankruptcy, where typically most of your debts can be discharged. And Chapter 13, which you might assume works similarly, though anyone who's been through it knows that it doesn't. And if all this seems needlessly confusing, it's because it is. The whole system is currently designed to be so discouraging that eventually you say, fuck it, and give up. <laughs> Ouch! Are you okay? So instead of watching a condescending series of videos about how to make a budget, why don't we both make better use of this time and enjoy this video of a man feeding a pack of raccoons individual hot dogs. Yes! 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 Oh my god! Look. Wait, isn't that one of the Chapo guys? That's like a... That's a guy that the, the Chapo guys watch, right? Like, he's not one of the Chapo boys. I'm saying Chapo FYM follows that guy, I'm pretty sure. I think... Filing for bankruptcy will never be as enjoyable as a raccoon eating a hot dog, but at the very least, it should be that simple. I mean, that's literally... Bye. That's our show. Thanks so much for watching. We're off next week, back May 2nd. Good night. Someone should make a spreadsheet about John Oliver taking a, 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 an entire week off and only covering the news once a week, I think. As an HBO subscriber, I would like to get more John Oliver uh, political coverage. No, you won't do that. You won't. You want to know why you won't do that? Because you don't expect that, okay? You don't expect motherfuckers to have these, like, insane... You don't have insane expectations from your content creators when it comes to, uh, you know, TV, when it even comes to uh, the internet content creators, regardless. So petty, LMAO. You think that's petty? That's petty, motherfucker? Are you crazy? That's literally... You, th th the reason why I'm saying that is because of this, okay? The reason why I'm saying that is literally because of this. Here, let's watch this again. <laughs> Tuesday, Dr. Seuss culture drama. Monday, Royals drama. ZZZ. Royals drama part two. Oh my god, yo. Someone made a spreadsheet documenting all of the uh instances where I mean they they created an unrealistic expectation on the boundaries of like when politics starts and ends. And then uh, you know, I want to see the, um, I want to see like the, uh, what do you call it? I want to see the people that like agree with this. They also didn't add their hours, right? Yeah. I, I need to know like, um, like the, who the fuck was uh, looking at this and going, eh, that's a pretty good idea. Wow, call the guy the stalker all you want. I give him credit for being able to sit through that much of a stream. That's pretty good. Literally lost to a mini boss, Miracle Wild, actually unsettling. Have you ever put a link to Hassan to prove how Hassan is a 200 IQ mastermind manipulator? Most of those are completely uh, R word of takes. The others are malicious takes. The sheer level of dedication is actually insane. I'm torn between applauding the effort or call the cops to catch the psycho. I didn't link here to show how disturbed some people actually are. Hassan reports because the guy spent this time doing can do much more IRL. It should be noted that the doc he admits himself that he rewatched. I insist to rewatch at least seventy-one hours of VODs. 
search for the manipulative Hassan takes to say that, I quote, Hassan streamed a total of 71 hours of politics from the data available from the 56 Twitch wads, VODs. The guy reviewed 56 fucking VODs to make this. It's not even starting about the creation of the doc itself. Even if you perfect the process, this doc must have taken a ton of hours. TLDR, Hassan responds with a random political frog tweet about him not doing enough politics on stream. Hassan argues back that he does it at least three, four, five hours per day usually. I say three to five hours, three on the minimum. Um, a guy responds back in that someone should do a spreadsheet to verify the claim by Hassan. Psycho decides it's time for him to shine. So what I don't understand is like this interaction happened this morning. So how did he rewatch 71 hours of political, uh, VODs? <laughs> Unless they already had it ready to go. Like they were doing this for a while. The reasoning is psychotic, but I don't think scrubbing through VODs would take that long. It probably isn't too long. You're only ready to find three content transition spots, personal news, politics, gaming, which should be easy to find. Well, he didn't do that, actually. If he did that, then it, 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 the evidence would show that it would be much longer. I would agree that if Asami made a clear cut his own content. Not shocking his chat is extremely parasocial because he reads the chat a lot. People think he's unironically a friend fucking weirdos on my own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Should go without saying, but literally who cares? It's so insane. Election season long ended. He still covers politics consistently. Finally found a thing that he loves to do outside of politics and reacting after the election and that he and a good chunk of the viewers enjoy. Is this supposed to be a rebuttal to him saying he still covers three to four or five hours of politics every day? I generally can't tell which kind of viewer made this. Like, is this some actual po political fraud? Do we know who made this? Because I have no idea. Because Biden di is disappointing shootings every few days and the justice system is fucked. Same shit every day in the US of A and coronavirus. Like, what do you want him to do with his new norm, LMAO? Or is this a hate watcher? This is almost guaranteed to destiny viewer obsessed with hating us on the condescending tone mixed with the XDs and Twitch emotes are dead giveaway. But then the fact that it's trying to prove that he's in a political commentator makes it super obvious that the community is a lunatic crawled out of. I don't, I don't understand. It's a pro-Trump random viewer and non-sub as people sit on Assange chat quite often and, and have no real stream from them. Do you actually have written expectations anywhere? I know people should just understand boundaries, but clearly plenty of people just don't. I think the funniest part about this is like, I've always tried to have a more streamlined approach to a stream, like a little bit more professional of an approach to how I stream, right? And, um, and what I, what I mean by that is, uh, <laughs> like I have tried. What? Oh, that person blocked me. I can't see it. I, I can't even see the... Per that person who made it literally blocked me. Um, anyway. So, yeah. yeah it was a fucking interesting... Interesting uh, thing to do there, but... Anyway. <clears throat> what I was... Uh, what I was saying is... Uh, I am... How do you lie with a straight face? Either you're unaware or just being manipulative. I've counted for the past few months. Oh my God. He has literally, he has been doing this for months. It's not a real account. He has 16 following in one follower. It's not like a real account. It's a sock account that he has for psychotic shit. You do maybe one, one and a half hours on average on a weekday. Fuck out of here. You changed. 
Okay, I will be making especially with past VODs that are available to me on Twitch showing that he's manipulating you. Okay. Um, what I was going to say is... Uh, Yeah, I, uh, he doesn't count, like, any of the reactions as political, even, like, Joe Rogan reactions and shit, which is ridiculous. But my point was, I'm a Twitch streamer, right? And as a Twitch streamer, I try to make my approach to my stream as streamlined as possible. I try to be live at 11 a.m. Pacific every day, okay? Every single day. Something that I've been able to uh, maintain for a very long time. I try to make it clear to you guys that, you know, during the week, we're going to cover politics for the first, like, three hours. See? Notice how the number is up here is where it says three hours and, you know, 20 minutes. For the three to four hours, there's going to be politics and reaction. Politics and reaction for the first three to four hours. Okay? Um, and then afterwards, uh, you know, it's uh, freestyle. Uh, if I'm addicted to a game, it's usually whatever game I'm addicted to that I'm playing. And, and, uh, so the thing is, that's not something you get from anyone. Like, that's not really something that other streamers, uh, do for the most part. I, I feel like the reason why streamers stream is because they have this freedom where they can just wake whenever the fuck up and stream whatever, however long they want to and play video games and do whatever the fuck they want, right? And just because I um, let you in to uh, this process a little bit or give you more than other uh, people and like try to maintain a schedule that I've set for myself does not really mean that you can do this. And most of you understand that. Most of you recognize that. This person does not, whoever made the spreadsheet. They're... Kind of unhinged, I think. You guys aren't in trouble for anything. I'm just saying that, like, that person is just fucking insane. How much time does it make creepy? And uh, the people that like tried to defend him or be like, well, there are other Twitch content creators that cover more politics than you. And there were a lot of you out there. I'm watching you. 12 month subscriber Andy's who are like, mm -hmm, there are other content creators on Twitch that actually do longer political coverage than you. Suck my dick. Anyway. What's the good LSF? XQC tweet about the hot tub meta. I don't want to click on it and then uh, fuck this up. There might be some shit on there. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. This hot tub meta is by far the most pathetic thing we've seen on Twitch in forever. What a sad reality. Please get this trash off the front page. Okay. One point five out of ten. Bye bye bye. Um, sorry, it wasn't a very good uh, XG impersonation. You guys know what I think about the hot tub meta, okay? You guys know what I think about the hot tub meta. Is it kind of strange? Have I interacted with the uh, hot tub meta to try to understand the mind of a watcher that goes in there and that's the kind of content that they seek out? 
Absolutely. Do I give a fuck? No. Personally, I do not. I do not have a problem with it. I don't think it's as low effort as people claim it is. And the reason why I say this is because there, a lot of effort goes into looking the way you do for this meta. Okay? It's low effort in the sense that uh, there are more creative ways of uh, doing such a thing. It's uh, low effort in the sense that it's... Um, just carnal. It's, uh, you know, you hot tub Coomer simp? I don't. I don't. I don't watch the hot tub uh, streamers. I don't watch the hot tub streams in general. I would. I. I think it's significantly more interesting to see what the chatters are saying and what and try to envision like what the average chatter watching a hot tub stream like what they're getting out of it. Because, let's be honest. Look, I don't have a problem with sex work in general. You guys already know this. I think sex work is fucking dope. But I would rather crank out the porn than uh, try to develop also a, a fake parasocial relationship with a streamer that I might ultimately crank out to um, if that's the kind of content that you're looking for. And if people turn around and say like, no, you're such a fucking asshole. Like, people aren't uh watching hot tub streamers for uh in that particular instance and not in others by the way that's entirely different but they're not watching the hot tub streamers specifically because they are horny and don't have access to uh pornography in their country and therefore uh are trying to find another way without bypassing uh, the porn restrictions with a vpn well you're wrong i'm sorry i've like it's it, but there's nothing wrong with that like i so don't misunderstand me Okay, that does not mean that you can demean or uh, objectify these women uh, in other circumstances or think less of them or uh, say, you know, their takes on other particular issues is, is uh, all of a sudden unwarranted or even say, well, they're asking for it when it comes to uh, being subject to sexual harassment and idiotic fucking takes. Okay, but it is like, you know, it's a sexualized content which I do not have a problem with. Uh, I don't have an issue with uh, content that is sexual in nature. <sighs> the minute is not a problem promoting it like top stuff 24 seven, keeping it on the front page, stupid at the point, Twitch should just make a new category. <laughs> no, 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 no. It shouldn't be on the Twitch front page though. I, guys, what you see on the Twitch front page is indicative of what your search results look like. How do you not recognize this at this point? It's a bit of a self-report in that regard. Not safe for work category, but pretty pog. Don't lie. No, 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 no. That would be terrible for fucking uh, ad shit, though. That's wrong. I think I've heard streamers talk about how they were scheduled for the front page. And by the way, I'd be very surprised if Twitch was uh, front paging a hot tub stream. But if they are, I guess that's what they want. Many people enjoy better the soft porn of hot tub content with the added not a sex worker fantasy girl streamers provide. They prefer to crank one out to a girl that is not a sex worker doing sex work. Um, but that's what I don't understand. Like a lot of these girls also have like OnlyFans and stuff, uh, which again, fucking awesome. Like, great. Who cares? Not the entire front page. The front page in the context of the top of that page is curated by Twitch. Uba clicks. Welcome to the internet, folks. Why is it surprising? Yeah, I mean. Women aren't full for men watching what they like. Yeah, I don't get it. Like. The hot tub minute is an abusive loophole in the rules. If it only happened when streamers started getting in trouble, so they found a way around it. Yeah, but like. 
I think that the argument here should be that, like, uh, you know, don't fucking punish uh, streamers with big titties for, you know, having boobs that fucking jiggle uh, and, and then, like, ban them. Not the other way around and be like, ban everyone. I, I just, I just don't care. I know I'm going to be, I know I'm going to be, I know I'm going to be in the minority here for this take. I understand that it seems like low effort content in the sense that it is literally low effort from Melina said that now her, Mayan adept, etc. are being harassed into making OnlyFans and doing hot tub streams. Twitch is in the place for it, in my opinion. But again, guys, that's fucking assholes who are literally unable to fucking control themselves. The people that are doing hot tub streams are not at fault there. It's the fucking assholes who are literally going to every other girl content creator and be like, yeah, where's your OnlyFans? Where's your OnlyFans? Motherfuckers ask me to make OnlyFans all the time. Some of you do it all the time. I literally tell you, shut the fuck up. I'm not going to do that. Like, it's not the streamer's fault. It's the fucking assholes. They're, they're freaks. The hot tubs are a distraction from Allah is the only good counter argument. How valid is the argument that it creates an unfair expectation for other female streamers because it's so normalized within Twitch? Again, that is a structural problem. It is not up to the hot tub streamer to educate uh, all of the uh, male watchers and even female watchers if they are participating in this. To, to set their expectations and set their boundaries. I see hot tub streamers. I am a human being. I see hot tub streamers on Twitch. I recognize that some hot tub streamers even have OnlyFans uh, as well on the side. I don't immediately assume that every woman on Twitch is going to be uh, doing hot tub streams or even a fucking OnlyFans. I find that to be really weird. I find that to be the fault of those who have these sorts of opinions. I don't know. Contradicting yourself? Why? What, what, what is it contradicting about what I just said? Are you stupid? Lol, you can pay them to write your name on them and promoting fake relationships. What is a stupid take from you? Yeah, I know that. They are providing a service that is parasocial in nature that is created specifically... I believe for people to crank out to. I'm saying that. I admit to that. It is sex work, in my opinion, which I have no problem with. I watch porn. That is my personal preference. Okay? Like regular porn, right? And that's what I get off to. I don't understand why people watch the other stuff or why they're into it. I know that this puts me again in the minority of both content creators on Twitch who are very much anti this. And also on top of that, uh, very much against like most of the audience that gets mad. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I have no problem with sexual content, but I don't think it has a place on a platform like Twitch. Like why not? If they're towing the line, if they're towing the line, then like, well, what's, what's up? So sex work should be allowed on Twitch. This isn't an 18 plus site. It's, it's just the line. It's right at the line, guys. That's what it is. And if Twitch decides that it's no longer on the line, then it's no longer on the line. Weren't men streamers getting banned for showing their nipples? No. So the dipshit saying it's easy to wear a bikini, go fucking try to put on makeup and gain the confidence to put your body on display for the entire world. Piss off fucking incels. I'm not personally into hot tub streams, but fuck right off. Incels, a lot of mishalajan showing up in chat. Weird champ. Yeah, no, I, I, I've said this before. Like, people will be like, it's really low effort content, right? But also at the same time, like, you don't look like that, dude. People want to fucking... Like, I, I'm not being delusional. You know what I mean? I, I'm not saying... Because there is, like, a delusional argument to make on here on the woke side of the argument, which is, like, don't sexualize the hot tub streamers. Like, bitch, shut the fuck up. Like, shut up, 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 shut up. And even if a fucking hot tub streamer was, like, don't sexualize my hot tub streamers, I'd be like, what are you doing then? Then do it with a fucking different outfit. How about that? 
It's not like you put a fucking hot tub in the middle of your house for no reason. You did it so you could literally show uh, some skin, which I have no problem with. It's wonderful. I'm glad that you worked out and I'm glad that you uh, look the way you do. And it's, it's wonderful. I'm, I'm glad that you're doing what you're doing. But don't fucking act like you're, you know, like writing a fucking dissertation or some shit. You're not. I think that that is still a lot of effort, by the way, a lot of effort that's off camera being put into being able to do a stream like that. But, you know, and, and that still, again, does not mean that people should vilify you, demean uh, or make fun of you, you know, say that your opinion is meaningless, all of that sort of thing. It does not mean that at all. It also does not mean that, uh, you know, uh, people should go and objectify other uh, female uh, uh, content creators. Anyway, there's a thousand plus sites that mean specifically for sexual content. Why Twitch? It doesn't matter. Like, you don't own the, the Twitch meta. People used to say that about politics too. Get politics out of my video games. Why is there political streamers on this platform? And now political streaming is a genuine part of this platform. We're not educating the, as streamers, we are not responsible for educating children, okay? I literally stress the importance of this take whenever my community will get mad at me for not calling out another fucking streamer for not having a point of view on a political subject. I, what do I always tell you? They're entertainers not their fucking job they're not literally supposed to be well versed in like every political subject as long as they're not being a fucking asshole and as long as they're not reinforcing like negative stereotypes of or 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 uh participating in the social conditioning that creates like more uh white supremacist points of view as long as they're not doing any of that i don't give a fuck that's good that's all i want i want bottom of the barrel don't be a fucking asshole right I'm confused. You support the hot tub meta on Twitch or not? I don't give a shit about it. I don't. And I think people that give a shit about it are, are like, they're going buck wild. Except this is exactly that in terms of XG and Asma Gold viewers. But shouldn't any form of entertainment have a little bit of education in it? No, motherfucker. What? No, absolutely not, dude. Listen. As much as I try to make my uh, entertainment as educational as possible, that is a crazy take, dude. I think as long as hot tub streamers are pranking on the uh, 18 plus signifier or whatever, I don't care. I just hate how they're abusing their private social relations. Lots of viewers on Twitch have low emotional intelligence. Dude, you can make that argument about every single person, including XQC, including myself, including... Like, it's literally every big streamer abuses their parasocial relationship then. The only difference there is you don't like the sexual part of it. That's it. We're streamers. There is a, a, there is an element of, of, uh, parasocial relationship in our relationship. That's how it is. Uh. I really do think that the bad part about this is the way that viewers behave. Like, listen, motherfucker. Get some napkins, crank one out if that's what you need to do, and don't take that shit to another person's fucking chat and, like, expect other female content creators to, like, do OnlyFans or hot tub streams. Like, fuck you, dude. Seriously, fuck yourself. Using sexuality to attract young teens, pedo shit, low-key. Yeah, dude. Yeah. The guy, Def Gorilla, who has a take like this, 
I wonder how old you are, motherfucker. There is absolutely 0% chance that you yourself are a teen. You might say that you're a teen right now, which is going to be very creepy of an adult human being that definitely is an adult human being because you have a take like this to act like you're a fucking teenager infinitely more creepy than that. Dude, there are so many adults on this platform. Like, what are you talking about? Anyway, God of War, Metro, Grand Theft Auto, and others have nudity and sexual themes in their games, and it's a okay to stream. I pray for XC train other streamers for their surgery so they can have a spine. Um, I get why streamers don't like it though, because they think it's low effort. Like, if someone is just fucking, they, I, I get why streamers think it's low effort because they think it's literally just someone who is hot sitting there and uh and and making money just by having a camera on them while they're hot. And there is kind of there there it is kind of low effort in that respect. But like, what what are, what am I doing? That's so fucking high effort. Yeah, XQC and I yell at YouTube videos and uh, members in our chat, which is significantly higher effort than a hot tub stream. You know what I mean? Like, it's all relative. It's all relative. I really do hope that uh, I've put I've put enough time into this platform. And uh, into fucking up my life in an uh, in an and ever to you know uh, lose any uh, opportunity of ever having sex ever again that people won't say like Hassan is just trying to fuck these women. I mean, they one of the hot tub streamers literally tried to bait me into being like, no, I'm not Indie Fox by by uh, claiming that I was gay. I must be gay because I am not like a. I, I am not uh, responding positively to the advances of the women on the platform. So don't try to fuck with me and say, like, I'm doing this to fuck them. Okay? Straight up. That is a real fucking clip. I don't think that... I, I, I have an opinion that, like, as long as it's not hurting anyone, you know what I mean? As long as it's not like bigoted, uh, as long as it's, uh, you know, like brainwashing people into fucking believing bullshit. I don't have an issue with it. Uh, I forgot to run an ad, by the way, at the top of the hour. So I'm going to run one right now while I continue making arguments uh, for uh, hot tub streams and shit like that. Okay, here's a one minute ad break right now. Indie drama baiting again. Why would you take her bait? What do you mean? Same kind of argument for the woman in the office who gets a promotion because she's an attractive woman, but very similar to the instance, those women are often expected to deal with sexual harassment in those scenarios. Just let people make money however they can. Damn chat. Um, I think people just don't want this website to be chatterbait. I don't think this website is going to be chatterbait. I think Twitch will probably start taking action against it regardless. I assume Twitch will start taking action against it. Um... This is vid. Cock, he's into dick. No, 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 that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's the meme. Oh, here it is. Here. I'm not even going to watch it, honestly. I don't think it's... A great part of Twitch is underage. Okay. Um, we do a lot of shit that underage people should not see with that res in that regard. It's not just like... Uh, a girl in a hot tub in a bikini, you know, writing fucking names on their body and shit. That is like uh, something that young people shouldn't see. Uh, one, there are probably plenty of parents that would be horrified if they saw what XQC or I have to say that, uh, that, that fucking, uh, you know, uh, that their kids are watching. 
Feel me? This notion that, like, uh, you know, kids are gonna fucking see Booba, oh my god. Kinda weird, like... Like, I, I just, I don't know. I don't have a problem with, like, nudity and, uh, shit like that. And if I did, I would just make my kids not watch it, you know? I would try to stop them from watching it if I legitimately had a problem. Hurting anyone, lol? What about the moral, lol? Like, what? But the morality of what? Seeing a fucking, uh, half of a titty? From a girl that has, like, a robust Instagram following? Like, what happened? Did you die? Did you, did you... I mean, I, I saw titties when I was a kid. I'm fucking normal. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I just find it weird because, like, look, everybody always literally goes to different places. Someone will try to make the morality argument. And when I fucking push that, when I push that button, they will turn around and be like, uh, uh, what about other platforms? There's so many other platforms where they can see porn. Like, why are they doing it? Well, I don't think it's porn. I think it's like, you know, teetering on that edge. But not all sex work is porn. Okay, so apparently the education thing is only a requirement in Germany and also it's a guideline. Bildungsauftrag is, it is called, what? I saw Amarath riding a Lapras and now all my childhood memories of enjoying Pokemon are destroyed. Like, are, are you... I don't know if we should uh, set expectations that like Twitch streamers are supposed to be moral arbiters uh, of of good beyond like uh, you know not being dipshits and assholes and not like spreading bigoted content because that's not a that is not a barrier that like a lot of these streamers who are fucking shitting on hot tub uh, the hot tub meta will be able to reach especially if we're looking at the general consensus we're all degenerate freaks okay like straight the fuck up we are degenerate freaks. All of us, myself included. None of us, none of us would meet that standard. Um, as a matter of fact, most Twitch watchers who are probably crying about their streams right now would be very upset at the, the, the marketable slash like a fucking made for TV style fake, uh, fakeness that comes along with abiding by those uh, sorts of rigorous standards of being, uh, like, child-friendly content. So, on the one hand, you're, like, crying about Twitch becoming degenerate, and then on the other hand, you're like, well, they're fucking applying rigorous standards now, and my streamer can't be as toxic as he always was. Feel me? Like, these are the same people who are like, oh, 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 Omega LOL, uh, offline TV, you know? Omega LOL, offline TV, what the fuck? Like, this kind of content is whatever. Which, by the way, uh, Offline TV, I think, makes great content that people obviously enjoy. Right? But uh, you're saying that, but then you're like, but they are way more marketable and way more, like, TV-friendly than a lot of other content on this platform. But then you're also like, oh, let's delete this. Let's eliminate this degeneracy. Okay. All I'm saying is, that's if that's degeneracy for a lot of people, what we do on a regular basis, what I do, what XG does, what Asmongold does, is considered degenerate, I promise you. And if Twitch were to crank down on, uh, you know, crack down on that, <sighs> oh boy, the platform would be a worse place overall. I think you exposing cussy to Saikuna's audience is way more damaging than the hot tub streams? Probably. Pure whataboutism? What? Why? I've already established that I don't have a moral problem with, like, hot tub streams. And then I moved on from that to talk about, like, rigorous standards that would... That would apply to... Like, if the standard is, like, 18+, plus or think of the children, then think of the children with respect to what I do and with respect to what XQC does. That's not whataboutism. It's me working off of the, the boundaries that you're trying to set. All 
How about the erotic terms of service? I personally don't mind. I added like 4K to my Amaranth channel points during this holy month. Jesus Christ. Astaghfirullah. But I shouldn't be surprised if they got banned based off that good stuff, though. People jerk off the streams that have nothing to do with sexual content or anything. Pretty sure you've heard of what, uh, pretty sure 